Have you wanted to bring more spice and spank into the bedroom and don't know how? Man, have you heard about this movie, Fifty Shades of Grey, but you're a little bit nervous because the women are really excited about it, but you're not quite sure what to do? If so, this Naked Talk is for you. I'm Elizabeth Wood. And I'm Dan Powers of Beyond the Bedroom. Naked Talk is where we get naked in a conversation of sexuality, intimacy, and relationship. We strip down and expose the bare facts so that you can learn what it takes for your love to thrive. We are really excited tonight to have with us Pam, Pamela, I call her Pam when she's not listening, Pamela Madsen and Mac McGregor. We're really excited to introduce them to you. I'm going to give a formal introduction. They are producing really fun workshops, Beyond Fifty Shades of Sexy, Laughter, Giggles, Moans, and Groans. It's a weekend workshop dedicated to creating the hot, the playful, the sacred, and the extraordinary in your bedroom and beyond. I'd like to introduce my friend Pamela Madsen. She's an integrative life coach specializing in women's issues, sexuality, fertility, body image, wellness, and rejuvenation. Pamela is the co-director of Back to the Body, Sensuous Retreats for Women. And I can't introduce her without talking about her book, Shameless, How I Ditched the Diet, Got Naked, Found True Pleasure, and somehow got home in time to cook dinner. It's been a number one bestseller on Amazon, and Pam, Pamela is also a blogger at Psychology Today with millions in readership, and it's about sexuality. You can find out more about Pamela at PamelaMadsen.org, and then my dear friend Mac McGregor. He's an educator, activist, speaker, and coach. Mac is unique in the world of sex and gender education, combining his extensive knowledge around sexuality with his unparalleled expertise in martial arts and energetics. Mac is a sought-after teacher in the world of sexuality, from energetics to kink to gender. Mac is known for his extensive knowledge in making sexuality accessible, playful, and sacred for everyone. You can find out more about Mac at BeTrueToYourself.org. I'm going to add this because the vision of Be True to Self is to provide a nurturing, supportive space where we can all grow, explore, and discover our hearts, dreams, and passions without fear of shame or judgment. Wow. Don't you want to stay tuned and hear what these two have to say? So I'd like to welcome Pamela and Mac to tonight's Naked Talk. Hi. Welcome, guys. Hey. <laughs> Glad to be here. Good. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah, so let's just get right into it. Um, you know, we asked some questions at the very beginning of the show, and the one that, that I know that a lot of men are very nervous about, because I've talked to some of them, is The Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, that movie's coming out, and, you know, what are, what are your advice to some of the men like that? Well, yes, this this book and movie have been a huge hit, uh, and most of the readership is women. And so the women are all excited about this, and this whole idea of being taken, and a little bit, yes. <laughs> take me now! Take me! You yes. don't take me! <laughs> right, take me. exactly. <laughs> and playing a little rough and risky, and how do you do that and do it safely, uh, because, you know, we don't want anyone to end up in the ER that night. <laughs> One of the ways to do that is to take a workshop with an educator who's experienced in this stuff. Don't just try to, to tie someone up if you don't know what you're doing. Um, there's a lot of safety precautions in that kind of play. So get out there, and what a sexy thing to do with your partner is to go take a, a sexy workshop from, a, you know, a credible educator in this kind of stuff. And it, you can have a lot of fun with it. And there are all different levels, from very basic, um, just a little blindfold and soft tie that can make it fun and exciting to, you know, to getting a little crazier. To getting 
spanked with the rose. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of gentle to me unless you're using the thorns. Yeah. So we want to let everybody know that Mac and Pamela are going to be here in, in the Colorado. Boulder, uh, in the Boulder, Denver area, April 10th through 12th. So we are going to dive deep into the workshop um, and give you all a taste of what you might experience when you're here. Uh, Mac, you touched very briefly upon the safety, and I know that the negotiation is something that's pretty, pretty solid. So how do people start talking about what it is they want and or what it is they don't want? Yeah, that's a great question. Negotiation is really important. And I have to point out that's one thing the movie Fifty Shades of Grey didn't uh, portray very well. Um, negotiation is talking about what your partner is interested and you're interested in doing and getting the buy-in. Are you interested in being tied up or is that something you don't want? If you are, um, how, a rope's okay, handcuffs, talk about what you want to use. And, and ex really line out what the person is okay with, what their boundaries are, and how far they're willing to go. And, and don't ever cross those boundaries if you're the one, if you're the top, as we call it. <laughs> so being really honest with one another and then having safe words. And we usually play with two safe words. One that's like, uh, just like um, red light, yellow light. The yellow light is, okay, I'm getting close to the edge, slow down, maybe take a step back. And red is, I'm done. Or you can pick your own words for it. But and, being really clear about what those words are. And you know what? This is play. Yes. This is all about being playful. And that's what Mac and I are all about as sex educators and um, as a couple. We're about playful sex. Right. So... Yeah, sure, we can play with some of the themes that people find in Fifty Shades of Grey. You know, I always love, my favorite is to say, tie them up and tease them. You know, there's lots of fun things that you can do. What people experience when they work with us is learning, well, how do you actually name your desires? Well, first of all, you need to know what the desires are. Like, what's available? What's on the menu? How can I order what I want if I don't know what I can order, right? So when people spend a weekend with us, we actually, you know, we give them a cooking lesson. <laughs> you know, we take out the rose. We show them what they can do with the rose. How do you play with the rose? How the rose can be lots of fun on various parts of the body in really safe ways. It doesn't embarrass people. We're really not about putting people of, at a workshop experience in an embarrassing experience. We make it safe, fun, playful, clothing on. People fly in from all over the place to work with us. You know why? They're going to laugh. <laughs> They're going to giggle. Yeah. They're going to moan. Yeah. There might even be a crowd. It, so the way I first met you was I read uh, the book Shameless, and I thought it was so empowering and enriching for women. Tell us a little bit about that book and how you got started in being a sex educator. Well, first I founded the American Fertility Association, so I felt really smart from the waist down anyway. You know, I had it handled. Right below the waist, I was an expert. My sexuality at home with my husband was fairly typical. I could come, he could come. Isn't that great? And we could be done in about five minutes. We were really proficient. You know, we just knew how to push the come button, you know? Um, and I just felt that there was more in my body. There was more about sexuality than I was actually finding in my marriage bed. And that's not a criticism of my husband. I think we're fairly typical of um, my husband and I, which is not Mac. Um, it's fairly typical of what a lot of marriages um, experience in America. And then it gets worse, and they go into numbness, you know, and then you just watch TV and sit on the couch together um, and make popcorn. And that's not a bad thing, you know, but there could be more fun in life. And I wanted to find that without, um, at that point in my life, I really wanted to stay monogamous. And so how did I 
literally um, get naked? How did I literally go and find true pleasure? How did I literally ditch the diet and get to love my body again and actually get home to cook my husband dinner? Because that was important in my house. So my journey is all just about to, that. to let the audience know, you are still married. I am still married. I am married for 33 years. I'm one of those 17-year-olds. I made the right choice at a very young age. And in my life, you know, everyone negotiates all of this differently. Um, in my life, I have a husband and I have a dom because I do like dominance and submission and Max, my dominant, and we teach together and it's pretty, pretty sexy. And what we want is to let other people in that you can expand your sexuality within your relationships, expanding your relationships. As a single person, come, come and learn with us and wake yourself up erotically so that you, you know, attract people in. I hate that song that's all about, um, you know, he's going to come and turn me on. She's waiting there for him to come and turn her on, you know, like a firefly. Yeah, yeah. I want women to show up warm, right? Because if you can show up warm and hot in your life, then you're going to you're going to attract guys like Mac, you know? They're not going to want to, like, who wants to show up to an ice cube? Like, that's not really sexy. So, so in our workshop, single people can come and learn about turning themselves on, which attracts other people um, to them. So it's about, yes, taking my journey that, you know, it's in the book and, you know, which is too long to go into now. Um, read Shameless. It's a fun ride. And expand it into figuring out how you can have exploration, safety, shake the cobwebs <laughs> off your marriage, off your single life, and come play with it. So what I like about what you're talking about, Pam, is um, you're talking about safety, you're talking about play, you're sensuously exploring that rose on camera. And then you're also talking about things that are more frightening, such as nakedness, body image, and the erotic. How do you help women in particular um, sort of get a handle on the more frightening words? And I think that you do it by really bringing laughter and playfulness in. But I'd love for you, you to. Yeah. I'd love for you to expand on that because some of those words are terrifying for our audience. Naked. Hmm. Well, first of all, in our workshops, you don't have to get naked. Right. Right. Okay. So um, we, we do have an opportunity in the evening um, for, those who wanna, who, for those who would like to participate in a, sexual, in a sensual laboratory. But we will have exercises and the people can participate in that or they can go back to their hotel rooms to do it in private. So there is no public nudity, but um, getting safe in your body. You know what? <clears throat> it's a process. I've been on the quote-unquote healing journey of loving my lovely, imperfect, curvy body for about 10 years now. And I have to practice every day. You know, I don't wake up every morning and look in the mirror, guys, and go, gee, you're a goddess. <laughs> wow, are you hot? I'd have sex with you. You know, not so much every morning. You know, sometimes I have to, I wake up in the morning and I go, what just happened to my neck? You know, like, what, 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 where did that go? Oh my God, let's lift that up. Um, I think that most of us have to practice body forgiveness and allowing ourselves to really love and appreciate our bodies the way they are. Nobody's body is the way they want it to be. 
And what I find is that when you're walking around warm, so that you're doing, we teach these erotic practices that will make you feel warm in your body. You are like the sexiest thing in the room. We were in the cab yesterday. We were in a taxi <laughs> on our way to um, a show. And we were just sort of talking about things. Well, maybe I was talking about things that turned me on. And that was kind of encouraging me. And, you know, the next thing I know, I was walking into the restaurant. Hello, people. Here I am. Yeah, I'm hot. I am so hot. And, you know, and the people looking at me and smiling. Because a warm, man, a warm woman or a warm man who's feeling good inside their bodies is sexy. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what you look like. Or what you think you look like inside? I mean, this sounds like bullshit. I know, but trust me on this. I'm not Christy Brinkley. I'm five foot two. I'm really curvy. I'm after fifty. <laughs> I'm gonna use that. After 50. So what? What I've um, I understand about you is that you really blossomed into. Your fullness. Your fullness. And so it's not so reserved it's not only for women that are in their 20s or 30s. You know, and I think yeah, that's also part of your peer panel is that, that you're speaking you're to mainstream women, women who have that same hunger that you clearly express and journey into it in your book. Well, we all want to feel alive, right, Nick? Yes, definitely. We all, we all want. To play again, and some of you never, some of us never learned to play. And so they need, people need prompts. You know, or they haven't played in so long, they've packed that part of them away for so long they've forgotten how. Now, Max a personal trainer in part of his life. <laughs> you know, so it's and like, arts teacher, yeah. and a martial arts teacher. So it's kind of like, how do we teach people to play again? And you know when you come together in a group and you permission people to do really fun, sexy things together, it turns them on again. It frees them up. It permissions them. And we're going to teach the tools. So, like, yes, this is the idea of the energy, right? You know, the energy is kind of like, ugh. <laughs> you know, the energy is sexy and it's fun and it's playful and... You know, I might want to become, like I did a few days ago, a magic pony and run away from Mac. You can't find me on the magic pony. You can't catch me. You can't. I'm over here. I'm over there. But you can't see me. You know, and it's fun to be the magic pony and lassoed and tied up and teased and, you know, have to take the magic pony pledge that you would never leave your master again. You know, um, and that's that that our way of playing, maybe. I'm sorry? How did that work for Mac? You made that promise to that. You stick to it? Well, so far, it's only been a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, so one of the things so that, that I really talking. liked about your book is it really gave women permission uh, to be like that, to be able to play. Um, you know, coming from a, um, you know, a stale relationship, I would say, uh, not that that's really a bad thing, but that's kind of what we almost all experience. Esther Perel talks about opening up and creating excitement in your relationship because uh, we do have this this cage that we've created once we've gotten married. I think that's a you know, really great concept that you guys are talking about that you talk about and you're keeping that as well. So who do you see as the primary people that would come to your classes? People, people that are missing the fun in their erotic life. I mean, this should be fun. We're erotic beings, and, and we want, you know, people who are just missing that, who are kind of, you know, either um, they're, they're, sec they're bored with their sex life or their sex life is so-so, and they want to take it up a few notches and just have a lot more fun with it. Or people who are already playing and who want a playground to come to. Yes. So, you know, you need places to do it. 
right? So if you're always in your bedroom, you're always in your house. So let's say you're you're single or you're married or in partnership, and you've already started to open things up. Okay, you've done a few tantra workshops. Okay, you're breathing. You know, you're gazing. You're pujad. You know, and you're wanting you're wanting more. Well, then come be with us. And practice your skills, learn more, come into a playful, grown-up space that's constructed for you to experiment further. I mean, basically, Mac and I are creating spaces we want to play in. <laughs> so you think we do this just to teach people? <laughs> no. We do this because we like to play. Mm -hmm. And if we run a workshop, we get to play with everybody. And when we enliven them, we enliven us. Does that make sense? So we need people to come so we have fun. <laughs> <laughs> so Mac, I know um, your your history. I know a little bit more about it because Pamela just revealed you were a personal trainer. So Mac, I'm I'm actually going to call out your focus and your discipline and your practice. Uh, I mean, as a martial arts champion, also a, um, a personal trainer, there's a lot of focus and discipline. Are you using that in what you teach, or are you breaking free of that? Because I think that's that's something that interests me. Ah, uh, well, that's a very good question. So this is uh, my 43rd year in the martial arts, and and uh, so I've been pretty hardcore. <laughs> it's kind of like walking to me, and. Uh, and I would say that I'm using it. For one thing, um, I'm using it to be very present where I am. So that would be the way, the main way I would say I'm using my focus is to be very present where I am. Um, one of the practices uh, in hardcore martial arts is when you walk in that dojo, you take your shoes off, you bow in, you leave the world outside. You leave the rest of the world outside and you're there focused on your training. And it's the same thing when we do this. When I step into that play space, that area, I that's that's where I, I am fully. I'm not thinking about, you know, all the things I need to do tomorrow, all the errands I need to run, <laughs> or what I didn't get done yesterday, or whatever. I'm staying very present there. So that's where I think it really helps you, you know. And it also... And of course, focus also helps. I mean, when you get right down to the nitty gritty of the of the sexual part, it's it helps as well. And the other thing that is crazy about my background, so combine that with the fact that I went to clown school, graduated from clown school, and there's the the fun extreme, right? <laughs> so yeah. So you know how to teach people. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I said learning how to teach people presence mm -hmm. in sexuality. Like how do we actually give each other our presence and our attention? Mac and I talk about this all the time because I think the number one thing that women want is attention. We want to be seen. We want the masculine and a heteronormative model. And, you know, there are people who may not be heteronormative, so is the masculine the one who holds the masculine, okay? Um, really wants to give that attention to the feminine energy who just really wants to be seen. And, you know, even a part of BDSM, what's happening, it could be played both ways, both genders, but we're seeing the woman, the feminine. What happens when she's tied up? She's the focus of attention, isn't she? <laughs> and she can't run away from it. So women have a lot of feelings about, I don't deserve attention, I want attention. I don't deserve attention. I'm too busy for attention. Oh, my God, when am I going to get any attention? So, you know, in Power and Surrender games, somebody is giving attention. Somebody's receiving attention. And we'll be teaching about that, about what, what really is a power exchange relationship. And even if you're not playing with power exchange, because our time with the people who attend our workshop, it's not all about BDSM. That's like, you know, it's a segment of the class, right? But playing with how do you give attention, how do you receive attention, how do you communicate about that is a really important tool set. 
I think that that's actually the, the crux of it. What, what Mac and then you expanded on, expanded on, was really about being present and focused in your relationship. And Mac said, if we're thinking about the errands, if we're thinking about what's left over from work or what we need to pack for vacation, we're really not present to the partnership and the, the potential of the energy exchange between us. So that actually might be my favorite number one tip that you've just um, shared with our audience. It's really being present despite all the busyness and all the mm -hmm. and sometimes unwelcome distractions. So I'm going to keep that. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's one other thing I had to add to that, uh, Elizabeth, is, is that um, as far as my focus from martial arts, I usually go into a scene, what we call a scene, or a sexy date night, or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's basically the same thing, um, with some sort of intent. And I like to call this focused intent. I teach that in martial arts. I teach in self-defense. I teach in my energy workshops. And I teach it in these workshops as well, because if my, if my intent is for this to be super playful in a certain way, then I'm going to put the energy of that intent forward and focus on it, right, to where everybody's going to get that, because that's the energy going out. If my intent is to be hot and steamy and rawr, the tiger and taker, that's the energy I'm going to put out. <laughs> that's the focused intent I'm going to put out. So that's another way it comes in. Like I can shift the energy of the date or the scene or whatever by the focused intent that I put out. And we're going to teach this. And we're going to give people ideas. And we're going to show, you know, I, I mean, how many times are you going to learn about sex toys? But guess what? You'll learn about sex toys. In a the very way, different way. In a very different way. And we've got some cool ones to show. And we're going to. You know, people are like, well, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Don't worry about it. All they have to do is come, show up, and we're going to guide people through these ideas, through negotiation. And, you know, there's negotiation whether you're playing with Fifty Shades of Grey or whether or not you're going to get a blowjob tonight. Right. Okay? So negotiation, speaking your desires, giving and receiving – Playfulness. This are the themes. And then I'll give you a little, um, a little snippet. Another thing that I like to share, and I'll be sharing in this workshop, is how you don't have to go out and buy uh, new things to have these special sex toys. I, if I came to your house, I could pick out twenty objects in ten minutes that are I can make a sex toy. Promise. <laughs> Just every everyday things around the house. And you so promise. <laughs> What'd you say? Do you promise that's going to happen in this house? Oh, sure. Yes, I do. <laughs> you could do an amazing thing. You could do an amazing thing with a fork. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> Woo! Getting hot and steamy over here. Well, we do have an ice cream scoop for the antimima treatment, so... <laughs> Anyway, I mean, that's way over my head, people. Someone's gonna have to explain that. <laughs> it's okay, Elizabeth. It's okay. You'll have to come to the workshop. <laughs> oh yeah. Thanks. So how? Tell, tell, I know that we start on. What's up? We're at our thirty minute point. Oh, we are. Okay. Well, I want them to tell us right. a little bit about the workshop. The workshop structure. The workshop. The workshop. It starts Friday night, so maybe I'll fill it in. It starts Friday night with a meet and greet, and then it's all day Saturday and all day Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, everything we just talked about is going to be in the workshop. Perfect. Right. I wanted to ask you to know that it was a full weekend, and I mean a full weekend. So. Yes. It's it's a very it's a very full weekend. You know, Mac and I have a tendency to want to overgive. So, um, you know, we're going to be playing with things like your sexual alter ego. Who is that? You know, like who's inside you um, that you want to play with? You know, we may be playing with costuming. Um, we're going to be playing with scenarios. Mm -hmm. And, and teaching couples how to share their fantasies. A lot of people are afraid to share their fantasies 
with their partner or partners because they're afraid of the shame or rejection. And we're going to go over some fun ways to share your fantasies. And for the single folks, we're going to pair you up. And so that would be a safe way, too, because you're kind of like practicing with a person on the airplane, right? You're not taking them home with you. Well, maybe you will. Probably you never know what might happen. But you get to practice with um, somebody else. Um, and so when you're in your relationships, um, you have more tools. So this will really work for singles and couples. Um, you know, we, we are going to be giving people play experiences and exercises around touch, negotiation, scenes, role play, mm -hmm. that they can do with their clothes on. And that will still be really hot and really sexy and really edgy. <laughs> and then on Saturday night, we have this optional laboratory experience where we will have a whole list of things that people can try out and do. And that will be clothing optional. And it will be three hours and you'll be choosing something to do. And you guys will be there. We're going to be there. That's four sex educators walking around, keeping everybody safe, supporting people, right. you know, who are having experiences, maybe even partnering with someone for a little while or demoing one-on-one -on -one with people um, to offer them support. And if you don't want to... You can watch. Watching uh, is participating. And we'll, and we'll have a sheet that people who want to do experiences privately um, in their hotel room can do that too, whether solo or with um, their partner. So everybody, this is an inclusive workshop. You can be gay, straight, transgender, married, single. We want humans. <laughs> well, you are human. Yeah. That's yeah. perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry, Elizabeth. I said that's perfect. I think that's a great explanation of what people can expect. I do want to let you know that we're um, at the end of our time together. For more information on the workshop, Beyond Fifty Shades of Sexy, please visit the website Beyond the Bedroom or BedEvents.com. And that about wraps up tonight's Naked Talk. We want to thank you for being a part of this potent, juicy and uh, playful conversation. Mm -hmm. Dan and I really want to thank our dear friends, Mac McGregor and Pamela Madsen, who you all can see in Colorado April 10th through the 12th of this year. Thank you so much for being with us, and we look forward to seeing you live and in this house. Have a great evening. Thank you.